Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the previous question papers of uh, GATE. And here in this particular video, we are going to discuss the previous questions of GATE 2016 in computer science discipline. Now, I'll be making three videos for this GATE 2016. As uh, you can see, I'll just let me just write it down. So, I'll be making three different videos here. Number one is the general aptitude section. Number two is the technical questions and number three is the technical questions which is out of two marks. So in total as you know in gate examination there are total of uh, 65 questions right. So in gate if you see uh, in gate there are a total of 65 questions. Out of these 65 questions the first 10 questions are from general aptitude. They are from general aptitude and the next 25 questions are from technical section but these are one mark question and the next 35 questions these are also from technical section and these are two marks questions so i'm going to cover both general aptitude technical questions of one marks and technical questions of two marks now as you can see i'll be making three videos for this so in this first video we are going to discuss the previous questions from the general aptitude now if you want to download a PDF copy of this slide that means the slide that I'm using to record this video if I want to download a PDF copy of that then you can go to the website which is ankurgupta.net and on this website just go to the gate solutions page and over there you can find the solutions of the previous year gate question papers so we have created a solution of last uh, 15 year gate question paper so from 2018 uh, to two th 2003 all these question papers with the answer keys so there will be official answer keys as well as the uh, proper solution of every question you can find it out on this website a part of this you can also visit our, our next website which is digimentor.com so in the digimentor.com website you can go to the download section so in the download section also you can find it out the previous solutions of uh, of uh, various things that we provide a part of this there will be a lot of free content that will be uploading in this download section that you can download free of cost for example the PDF copy of this uh, uh, particular video will also be present in the download section you can go there and you can download the PDF copy so that generally saves a lot of time because uh, by, while reading the videos I'm going to take every question one by one and I'm going to explain them thoroughly but if you want to skip that step you just want the written text text solution then you can go to the website and you can download the PDF copy of this particular video okay now we'll be taking the first five questions first so this is uh, the first five question all these questions are of one marks so first question is saying out of the following four sentences select the most suitable sentence with respect to grammar and usage so they're asking in which of the following sentences they have used the correct grammar so let us read the first sentence they are saying I will not leave the place until let me just cancel it so I will not leave the place until the minister does not meet me so they are asking minister does not meet me now here you can see uh, they have used two words specially one is until so we have the word until and second is does not meet now uh, if you see the sentence this does not mean itself is used in until so when I'm saying uh, I will not leave the place until the minister meet me so this does not itself is included in that so because of usage of this does not this first sentence is wrong the second sentence says I will not leave the place until so again here they have used the word until the minister doesn't meet so this doesn't and does not both are actually representing the same thing so doesn't is just a shortcut form of representing does not okay and the third one is saying I will not leave the place until the minister meet me now here the problem is uh, see they have used until and they have removed the doesn't and does not so that is correct but as you can see here uh, here minister is a singular entity so this is representing a singular entity so that is a singular noun but when i'm saying meet now this meet is a singular verb it is a singular verb so whenever we use a singular verb generally we use small s with verb so instead of meet it should be meets me it should be meets me so uh, c option is also wrong b is also wrong a is also wrong now you can see the d option i will not leave the place until the minister meets me so because they have used s here that is why this sentence is correct so after all out of all the four sentences so the correct answer is option number d which is uh, saying uh, minister doesn't uh, minister meets me okay next 
रिवर्डिंग ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिटर्न और स्पोकन इज सो रिवर्डिंग ऑफ समथिंग रिटर्न और स्पोकन सो द वर्ड इज रिवर्डिंग ऑफ समथिंग रिटर्न और स्पोकन सो देव गिवन फोर ऑप्शन नंबर वन इज पैराफ्रेज सेकेंड वन इज पैराडॉक्स थर्ड इज पैराडाइम एंड फोर्थ इज पैराफिन सो लेट इस फाइंड आउट द मीनिंग ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ दैम बट द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज ऑप्शन ए दर इज पैराफ्रेज बट लेट एस रिट इट आउट सो पैराफ्रेज द सिनोनिम्स ऑफ पैराफ्रेज इज रिवर्डिंग द फर्स्ट सिनोनिम इज रिवर्डिंग इट कैन ऑल्सो बी से रीफ्रेज और री स्टेट और री स्टेटमेंट और रेंडरिंग और रीवर्डिंग और ट्रांसलेशन और वर्जन और रीफ्रेजिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर यूज एज अनोनिम टू द पैराफ्रेज सो पैराफ्रेज मीन रिवर्डिंग ऑफ समथिंग रिवर्डिंग ऑफ समथिंग ना वट इज पैराडॉक्स सो यू कैन सी पैराडॉक्स इज समथिंग अ स्टेटमेंट दैट साउंड लॉजिकल बट प्रूव टू बी इलॉजिकल सो लेट मी जस्ट राइट इट डाउन हेयर सो दैट यू कैन यूज इट फॉर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग पैराडॉक्स मीन्स अ स्टेटमेंट a statement that sounds logical that sounds logical but proves to be illogical proves to be illogical when investigated when investigated that is called as paradox now you can see here i've used two words uh, uh, two uh, buttons here so the red button is saying the blue button is true and the blue button is saying the red button is false so because both of them are contradicting each other so this is representing a paradox next is paradigm so generally this paradigm is also used with the paradigm shift and what does paradigm actually mean so paradigm is a way of thinking or looking or you can say perception about something so paradigm is perception about something about something so when we say paradigm shift that means perception has changed the way you look at something that has changed so uh, i've written, written here also so it is a change from a uh, one way of thinking to the another is called as paradigm the last one is paraffin now this paraffin is actually the name of a chemical so uh, it is uh, not having the meaning like paraphrase paradox and paradigm this is the odd one out so this is a flammable uh, substance that is used in candles as well as polish so this is used in candles as well as polish okay so obviously you can see paraffin is wrong paradigm is wrong paradox is wrong so correct answer is option number a that is paraphrase next an Archim archimedes said give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it i will move the world so if you take the literal meaning of this sentence it means that if this is representing earth or this is representing the world and uh, this is representing a lever it is the lever and this is representing the fulcrum okay so he is saying that if you give a uh, lever to me long enough then i can move the world so i can uh, take this world up but uh, this is not possible so actually this sentence is a figurative sentence so it means a uh, figurative sentence figurative in hindi is also a kahavat kahavat okay so there are a lot of kahavat for example uh, there is a kahavat like karat karat abhyas the uh, right so you have heard that uh, also right so that is written by uh, kabir das so uh, when we send give sentences like this it means that we are giving something figurative it is not literal so literal means something that is uh, exact having a meaning so but still let us uh, look at the difference between the four of them the first is the difference between figurative and literal for example if a person says he has lost his mar marbles so if you take the literal meaning that he uh, then he is having marbles then he has lost it but if you take a figurative meaning of this that means that he the person got mad so it is presenting the person is mad or he's lost his brain lost his brain or something uh, that represent that uh, he is mad at something okay so that is the meaning of literal and figurative the next is the difference between collateral and figurine so collateral is also written as indirect parallel subordinate guarantee security collaborative pledge accelerating and accompanying so accelerating and accelerating and accompanying so here uh, this collateral is this and then the last one is figurative so figurative is just representing something kind of a statue which is in the form of human 
so there is a difference between the four of them there is figurative lateral collateral and figurative so when the archimedes said the above sentence it means that um, he wanted to represent something figurative or he wanted to say something that he if he work hard then he can do something uh, which is impossible the next one is if uh, relf taga means carefree so they are giving us some words so it is saying relf taga it means carefree next next is o taga it means careful and the next one is fataga it means careless it means careless okay now which of the following could mean after care so, so we need a word for after care now if you look all of them you'll see that here we have something in common that is t a g a t a g a and t a g a so t o g a is coming at the end and here care is coming in the beginning care is coming in the beginning so that means t a g a is actually representing care for after care we should have the word taga so t a g a okay and a part of this they have used after so we don't know what is the meaning of after but still uh, if taga means care then r e l f means free and o means full and fur means less okay so it is uh, fur means less o means full and relf means free okay so when they are writing something like relfer relfer means rel means free so so rel means less and uh, sorry uh, relf relf means free relf means free and uh, fur here fur means uh, less so less free or something so this is not the correct answer for this now because uh, here we have a word care so care should be there okay now uh, care means t a g a so t a g a is coming here t a g a is coming here t a g a is also coming here but you can see uh, in the first words that they are in care is in the beginning care is in the beginning therefore taga is in the end now here because care is in the end therefore taga should be in the beginning so obviously this cannot be correct answer so we have the answer as option number b which is taga fur and taga zen but you know what is the meaning of fur fur means less therefore taga fur means ke uh, careless sorry uh, taga fur so fur as you can see fur means less so taga uh, taga fur means uh, less care sorry it is less care therefore the correct answer to this question is option number c which is taga taga means care and zen zen means uh, after so this is uh, a decoded and coded messages that you send so correct answer to this question option number c next is a cube is built using a 64 cubic block of side one units after it is built one cubic block is removed from every corner of the cube and the resulting surface area uh, of the body after the removal is so they are asking the resulting surface area so i'll just explain you with an example so here they are saying that we have 64 cubic block so this one is from here to here so it is representing a cubic block so generally cubic block is looks something like this okay so we use these kind of 64 cubic blocks where every one's dimension is one unit length breadth uh, and height both all of them are one unit so we use 64 of them and to make a cube so as you can see here i've used 64 of them so here total of four blocks here total of four blocks here and total of four blocks here so Uh, the total number of blocks here that is used as 4 into 4 into 4 that is equal to 16 into 4 which is 64 so we are using 64 blocks to uh, represent this cube okay now they are saying from every corner we have removed one cube so that is just a example so here from here they have removed one cube from here they have removed one cube from here they have removed one cube and in every corner they have removed one cube now what is the change in the surface area so you can see what is the original surface area of this so surface area of a cube is 6 into side square so here 6 into side is 4 into 4 that is equal to uh, 6 into 96 so 6 into 16 which is equal to 96 so 96 is the surface area of this particular cube why we are using this 6 because there are six faces six faces so this is the first face this is the second face this is the third face 
and again there's three face in the back also so there are a total of six face and the area of every face is uh, side square so because it's a side and this is side so side square therefore the surface area of a cube is six side square now because uh, here you can see there are total of six sides so that is why the surface area will be 96 now th they are saying after removal uh, of one cube in every corner then what will be the change in the surface area now you can see when you remove this cube from here now this area will look something like this okay so this will be uh, how it is uh, all the corners will be looking now you can see here uh, this side this side and this side so this uh, cube is uh, you know contributing three times so one surface area is this one surface area is this and one surface area is this so even after removal so we are not changing uh, the surface area so one will be this one will be this and one will be this so we will be having three surfaces so even if you remove four cubes from the end all the corners of this particular cube you can clearly see there will not be any kind of changes in the surface area so surface area will remain the same therefore the surface area will be 96 only there will not be any kind of change so correct answer is option number d so all the questions that we have dis discussed till now all these questions were of one marks now let us look at the question which is of two marks the first one is saying a shaving set company sells four different types of razors razor elegant smooth and soft so razor elegant smooth soft and executive so these are actually uh, sorry uh, these are four different types of razor which is elegant smooth uh, soft and executive okay next the elegant sells at the rate of 48 rupees per unit smooth sells at the rate of 63 soft sells at the rate of 78 and executive sells at the rate of 173 the table below shows the number of each razor sold in each quarter of the year so this is representing all the quarters so first quarter second quarter third quarter and fourth quarter so what is the first quarter first quarter is from january to march the second quarter is from april may and june third quarter is from july to uh, september and the fourth quarter is october to december so these are four quarters in the company now which product contribute to the greatest fraction of the revenue of the company in that year so you can see uh, this is the total sales of elegance so this plus this plus this plus this so total sales the so total sales of smooth will be this plus this plus this plus this so you have to find this uh, addition of these in this manner that is in vertical manner so you can find out the addition of this and now if you want to find the sales of this so you can see elegance here elegance sells at the rate of 48 so you add all of them and you multiply it by 48 smooth you add all of them and you multiply it by 63 because 63 is how the selling price of smooth so you add all of them and you multiply it by 78 that is the selling price of soft and 173 is the selling price of executive okay after uh, adding this so what will be the sum that you are going to get here so the sum that I've already calculated, elegance is going to be sell, sold four nine two zero four eight zero. So this is the amount of rupees elegance will be selling. In the same way, smooth will be selling at rupees uh, five zero four three seven one seven. Now you can also calculate for the smooth. You can also calculate for the executive. So executive, I think it will be sold at the rate of seven six seven nine six one three two. Okay. So you can find all these values. Now to find the fraction, add all these sales. That is sales of elegance. What I'm going to use sales of elegance plus total sales of smooth plus total sales of soft plus total sales of executive. So that will be coming out to be uh, two two three nine zero eight three seven. I've already calculated this value so that we can same time in calculations so this is the total sales let us say it is ts okay so then we have to find out their fraction so for um, elegance you have to find the total sales of elegance divided by uh, total sales so ele sales of elegance divided by total sales in the same way for sales of smooth you have to find the total sales of smooth that means you have to take this value that is five zero four three seven one seven and then you have to divide by total sales that is two two three nine zero eight three seven or something 
now that comes out to be for elegans the total sales is going to 0.219 so that is a fraction because they are asking about in the form of fractions for executive so it will be something around 0.303 for smooth it will be something around 0.225 and for soft it will be something around 0.251 so I have already calculated these values they are saying uh, which contribute to the greatest fraction so greatest out of all of them is executive so executive is uh, contributing up around 0.303 which is approximately 30% of the sales here 30% of the sales is from uh, executive okay so correct answer is option number b here which is executive next uh, question number seven Indian currency notes shows a denomination indicated in the last 17 indicated in the in at least 17 languages so at least 17 languages what is the denomination denomination means the amount for example generally if you have a, a rupee then the amount is written as 10 so 10 is a denomination in the same way if we have uh, one more note which is having the amount as 50 so that is a denomination okay so they are saying the denomination generally written in at least 17 languages if uh, it is not an indicator of the nation's diversity nothing else is so which of the following can be logically inferred from the above sentence the option number a india is a country of exactly seven languages so here exactly is not correct because they are discussing about at least so option number a is wrong now option number b is saying that linguistic pluralism is only indicator of a nation's diversity that is also wrong because that is not written here nowhere else, nowhere is written this sentence so it because the word only in this option so because we have also used the word only only is uh, not correct okay but instead of they could have written linguistic pluralism is the indicator of nation's diversity instead of only if they could have written linguistics pluralism is the indicator of nation's diversity then it will be correct but because they have used only that is not correct option number c is saying indian currency notes have sufficient space for all the indian languages so they have not discussed about space at all so they are discussing space so this is also wrong they are not discussed about space option number d is saying linguistic pluralism is strong evidence of india's diversity now that is correct because uh, uh, because here we have 17 languages that is saying that is just good enough to say that India is a diverse country so option number D is the correct answer now question number 8 is saying consider the following statement relating to the level of poker play of 4 players so they are saying P beats Q so if we have P P can beat Q R is beating S and S loses to P only sometimes only sometimes so it might be happen that uh, p wins sometimes from s and r always loses to q always loses to q okay so r always loses to q but uh, you can see if we apply if we apply transitive dependency transitivity here transitivity so if you apply the transitivity then it should say that p uh, uh, lose P always beats Q and uh, R always lose to Q so uh, Q beats R and R beats S so that should say that uh, P should beat S okay so that should happen but they are saying S loses to P only sometimes so that means this transitivity is not valid so this is not valid not valid so it doesn't happen just because S loses to P so tran transitivity we can say it is not correct so here saying which of the following can be logically inferred from the sentence p is likely to beat all the three players that is wrong because uh, you know s loses to p only sometimes so this is not correct next s is absolute worst in the set so this is also not correct because s loses to p only sometimes so it is not absolute worst so option number uh, statement number one and two both are false so correct answer is option number d which is neither the statement number one nor the statement number two that is the correct answer to this given question okay now let us look at the question number nine if f is equal to 2 raised to power 7 plus 3x minus 5 now which of the following is a factor of fx now there are two ways of solving this problem so first way first way is that when we have the function that is fx is equal to 2 raised to power 7x plus uh, 3x minus 5 now in this sentence 
uh, try to divide this sentence with these values so for example initially i'm going to try to divide with x cube uh, plus 8 this 2x is power 7 plus 3x minus 5 second is um, then i'm going to try to divide by this and also going to try to divide by this and also going to try to divide by this now if any one of them can divide uh, this particular function then obviously we can say that that is a fraction but that is a very lengthy process so uh, actually both the processes are lengthy but there's one more way of solving this one that is a hit and trial method but uh, sometimes you can easily find the solution of the hit and trial method and sometimes it creates a problem for example here we have 2x uh, to the power 7 plus 3x minus 5 that is a function fx now here we have minus 1 here we have minus 5 and here we have 1 so that from here we can say x is equal to 1 from here we can say x is equal to 5 divided by 2 from here we can say x is equal to minus 1 and uh, then we can find it out the values okay so from here you can say x is equal to under root of minus 8 so cube root of minus 8 so from here just put the value of x is equal to 1 here so if i read, uh, write f of x is equal to 1 so it can be written as 2 into 1 raised to the power 7 plus 3 into 1 minus 5 that comes out to be 3 plus 2 minus 5 so this value is representing 0 so because this value is representing 0 therefore i can say that this is a correct answer this is a factor but if you try to put x is equal to 5 divided by 2 into this if you try to put x equal to 5 divided by 2 into this then you can find it out that function the value of the function is not 0 so in any case if the value of the function is 0 then we can say that is a factor okay so question number 9 is uh, can be solved this way so correct answer is option number b then we have the question number 10 actually it is the most difficult as compared to all the questions a uh, little bit tricky also but i also like this question very much it is saying in a process the number of cycles to failure decreases exponentially so uh, cycles to failure decreases exponentially so this is a word and they are discussed about the exponential decrease with an increase in load so that means if load will increase then cycles to failure to failure will decrease exponentially now at load of 80 units it takes 100 cycles so 80 units take 100 cycle to failure when when the load is halved half means 80 divided by 2 which is equal to 14 so when the load is 40 units then it takes 10,000 cycles for the failure now the load for which the failure will happen in 5000 cycle is now you can see here when we have something called as exponential increase and exponential decrease so what do you mean by exponential so what do you mean by exponential so exponential means something that is in the powers okay so when i say we have exponential increase exponential increase so generally exponential increase can be represented something like this um, c is equal to a into k raised to power l okay or let me instead of writing like this let me come back to more basics i mean let me explain you in more depth here okay now what they are saying is that we have an exponential uh, function so exponential function uh, can also be written as f of x is equal to a into k raised to power x so this function is actually exponential where a and k are constant so a and k are constants okay so uh, and when i say x is equal to zero so when x is equal to zero when then i can say that uh, this f of zero is going to be a into k raised to power zero which is equal to a itself okay now uh, here we have cycles to failure so first thing is cycles to failure and we have load so we have two quantities cycles to failure and load so let c is equal to cycles to failure cycle for failure and uh, uh, l represent the load okay and we have a and k a and k they are representing constant values they are representing the constant values okay now if something like this happens in that case when we have exponential increase exponential increase that means it can be presented as c is equal to a raised to power k a into k raised to power l and exponential decrease means it should be c into uh, c is equal to a upon k raised to power l so these are two things now from here uh, because they are discussing about the exponential decrease in the failure so we have to take this value that c is equal to a upon k raised to power l 
Now to solve this equation, take log on both sides. So it can be written as log c is equal to log a multiplied by l log k. Okay, so that you can find it out by using the formulas of logarithms. Now we know this value, and we know the original values of cycles and failures. So just substitute those values. So first case is that load at 80 units. If the load is 80 units, then it takes 100 cycles to fail. So here just put cycle is equal to 100. So that is log 100. And uh, uh, then log a plus uh, here l is representing the load, so load is 80 into log x, log k, sorry, log k. Plus the next is when uh, it is halved, that is load is 40, then there is 10,000 cycle. So I can say log of 10,000 is equal to log a plus 40 log k. Okay, so this is equation number one, and this is the equation number two. So with the help of equation number 1 and 2, you can find out the value of A and you can find out the value of K. Okay. So if I just solve it, I just write it more clearly here. Then I can say that we have log A is equal to log 100 plus 80 into log K and log A is equal to log 1000, sorry 10,000 plus 40 into log k. So this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. So therefore from equation 1 and 2 we can say that log a comes out to be 6 and log k comes out to be 1 by 20. Just use these equations okay, and try to solve the solutions. You can easily find out the value of a and k. Log a and log k. Now they are asking that uh, uh, what the load for which the failure will be 50 cycles so for 50 cycles what will the failure therefore we have to find f l right so uh, how can you find l uh, here you can see that uh, the formula is log c log c is equal to uh, log a plus l into log k so log a plus l into log k okay and here then we have to find the value of l so it can be find it out as L is equal to uh, log A minus log C divided by log K. Okay, so you can take this on this side and you can divide. So this can be written as uh, log C minus log A. So that can also be written something like this. For C is equal to 5000, therefore this value of L will become 6 minus log 5000 or you can say log 5000 minus 6 divided by 20 so that is divided by log k so that is going to be 46.0206 therefore the correct answer is 46.02 uh, for this given question okay now if you check all the options so option number 1 is saying 40 Option number 2 is saying 46.2, option number 3 is saying 60.01, uh, 60 option number D is saying 92.02. The correct answer is option number B that is 46.02. Okay, I hope that you understood this one and um, thank you so much for watching. Now let us move on to the next video where I am going to solve the first 25 questions from the technical section. And I hope that this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching.